Mm -hmm. This is a map of all of the history of the expulsion of the Jews in Europe. They have been like, I have not, never seen a minority being kicked around this much, right? And of course, this comes back to the, you know, the whole idea about the original sin that you have uh, betrayed uh, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, the, 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 the blood of Jesus is on your hands. Then comes the 11th century. At that time, Jewish people were not allowed to own land. They were just peasants. Even some of the professions were not even allowed to participate in. But they were allowed to do one thing, usury, money lending, because it was prohibited by the Catholic Church to engage into that. So what happens when you work in money? You get richer, right? And those Jews lived in ghettos. Now, ghettos were not just like isolated neighborhoods and cities. Sometimes ghettos were outside the city. This is like how isolated they were. And in those ghettos, they have to pay gold to the mayor or the governor or the prince or the noble. So they would say, mm, you're getting richer. I need more taxes. So they pay tax. What happens when you have a business and they increase your rent? You increase your service, increase the taxes. Increase the so what happened? What the Christians started to default. And suddenly, the image of the greedy Jew was created. This was created because of their conditions. And it came, became worse in 1095, when Pope Urban II called for the first crusade to go and, 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 and save the birth, the birth of Jesus from the unbelievers Muslim. And you know, this crusade did not kill a single Muslim. You know how many people they killed? 2,000 Jews. Because it's like, wait, the non-believers are all over there, why? So they went to the, it's called the Crusades of the Rhineland. So they went to the Jewish community because, hey, we own the money, so let's kill them better than paying them. And then came the plague. And then all of the things like, oh, they're killing babies, babies, who would that do that to a baby, you know? And they accused them of, of poisoning the world. This was the kind of oppression that the Jewish people went through. Fast forward 19th century, there was like the Eastern Jew in Ukraine and, and Russia, and there was the Western Jew, uh, Jews in Europe. Those people in the East, the Eastern Jews, had to immigrate because they were pogroms and they were like, you know, kicked out. And at a certain point, the people in the West, especially in England, it's like, mm, there are too many Jews. We need a solution. A solution for what? For the Jewish problem. So it's like, we need to get rid of them. And you know what? Palestine was not even on the, in the A list. Palestine on the, was in the B list. Because England proposed 6,000 square miles in Uganda for the Jews, 1903. And the reason why Palestine was not on the list, that it was objected by a lot of rabbis that said, like, it's a promised land, but only when the Messiah comes. But uh, there were other options, Argentina, South Africa, Uganda, Madagascar. And eventually, they said, all right, let's do Palestine. So they went to Palestine in 1914. There was 700,000 people living in Palestine, 3% were Jewish. 1917, Belfort Declaration, Arthur Belfort, he called the Jewish people in England that they are alien and hostile race. And the thing is, the only Jewish member of the parliament, of the English parliament, Lord Montenegro, he objects and like, these are British citizens. They, we should not kick them out. So they pushed them, they pushed them, but it was not going fast enough. Came the Nazis. And then it was not about the solution anymore. It was the end losing, the final solution by Hitler, because he needed an answer for the Jewish question, the Jude Frage. And then, the, as you see, the Holocaust happened, the most orchestrated, industrialized, horrible genocide in our modern time. Six million Jews died. So it accelerated, and they went. First of all, they left East Europe, and they went to West Europe, and they went to America, and they were turned down, and they were pushed towards Palestine. So by 1948, right before the declaration of the State of Israel, there were two million people living there. Only 30% of them was Jews. So the whole idea of like a land without a people to a people without a land was a marketing thing. They were already Palestinians. So suddenly, from our perspective, the Jewish problem is not a Jewish problem, is not a Middle Eastern problem, is not an Arab problem, it is a European problem. It was pushed on us together with the guilt because now we are the anti-Semite. We are, now we are the Jewish hater. And not just that, they took land. And, that, and so, suddenly this was like a conflict, a hate, a problem that we didn't have to do anything with. This was basically pushed on us by the Europeans. You see, so this is why it is important to say that. And I'm not saying that just like, oh, let's wipe out the state of Israel. Let's like push up in the sea. No, but it's important when you talk about the conflict, that you talk about the root causes. Right? No, there, were, uh, there was like a vibrant Palestinian culture happening over there. And right now they are erasing this culture. Suddenly I'm seeing of like, 
Israeli feta cheese. Israeli hummus, oh, that's an insult. Israeli hummus, come on. I mean, take the land, but leave the hummus, man. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's not fair. You are someone who's always spoken against culture, uh, uh, cancel culture. Yeah. Right now, a whole culture is canceled.